All right, so let's start by going over this pipeline with minimum cost problem. In pretending this is a project that you're doing, I'm working on it with you. I want you to pay attention, not just to how do I do the calculus, but how do I think about solving the problem? Which means you need to think about practicalities, which also means you need to think about what's called mathematical modeling. And in mathematical modeling, you often need to make simplifying assumptions. And the simplifying assumption here in this problem, when you look at the map of the swampland, the wetland, is to assume it's got a nice shape. And the initial shape that they suggest to assume is a rectangle, but that's not as ideal as it could be. But we see if we can try to solve the problem by assuming the swamp is a rectangle, or at least get close to solving the problem. And then we try to refine what we do from there. That's the process of mathematical modeling. Simplifying things, trying to solve the simple problem, and then if that's not quite good enough, try to solve a more complicated, but perhaps more accurate problem. So here's the problem statement. A common problem encountered by the oil industry is determining the most cost-effective, I'll go ahead and underline things here, cost-effective pipeline route or route, whichever way you want to pronounce that, in connecting various wells in an oil fertile area. We've got a map that we'll look at here in a second of Northeast Ohio with a wetland or swamp area outlined for clarity. An existing oil well is at location B, and a new oil well is going to be dug at point eight, we'll see on the map. Pipeline installation company must be directed to where as to where to lay the connecting pipe to again be most cost effective. Now, of course, in real life, you got to think about environmental impacts and that kind of thing. But assuming that they've gotten the approval from uh, the state to lay the pipeline whichever way they want through the wetlands, then we can go ahead and try to solve the problem mathematically. We've got some other pieces of information. We've got a cost for the pipe itself as a dollar fifty per foot. Let's skip the second bullet. We've also got a cost of crossing normal terrain at an installation cost of a dollar twenty per foot. Evidently, this installation cost, when you look at the next bullet, probably includes a labor cost in a certain number of dollars per hour, but they don't tell you that, they just give you the cost in dollars per foot. Sometimes that happens in real life. Sometimes you have missing information. We don't know the labor cost of laying the pipe overall, but we do know the labor cost. When we go through the wetland, there's an additional track hoe that costs a certain number of dollars per hour. So yeah, sometimes we're given information in units that might be inconsistent. And one aspect of mathematical problem solving is to try to figure out how to convert those different kinds of units, dollars per foot versus dollars per hour, to something consistent that you can work with. And during a 10 hour direct day, the track hoe can dig approximately 300 feet of trench. So evidently the workers would be willing to work on it up to 10 hours per day. What is our goal? We want to be cost effective. Determine the pipeline route connecting the new well at A to the new well at B, which incurs the least cost. Emphasis on the word least. We are trying to minimize something. When you're solving a problem like this, if it's given to you in words, especially if you don't mind, well, if you've got a book, if you don't mind writing your book, it's fine. But if you've got a piece of paper or something, underlining things, keywords is certainly a good problem solving strategy. That includes on your exams, though on your exams, you also have the burden of time, but it still might be worth doing. That can help highlight things. Think about what you're given. They do give suggestions. First, solve the problem as if the wetland is a rectangle. Then try to improve on the solution by modeling it more accurately. It's not exactly a rectangle. It's more precisely a trapezoid, although even there, it's not perfect. Here's the picture. Here's the wetland on the back. So yeah, it looks most close to what's called the trapezoid. It's a four-sided figure where two of the sides are parallel. This side and this side would be parallel. This side and this side are not. But initially we're pretending it's a rectangle. Again, that's a theme in mathematical modeling is make simplifying assumptions to help you solve the problem. It may not be the best solution, but it is a solution. 
So here we go. It is important to note the scale. One centimeter equals 100 feet. And let's go ahead and double check the measurements that I told you over the email. So we can imagine that the bottom of the rectangle is about like that. One side of the rectangle goes up about like this. Not drawing it perfectly. One side goes up about like this. And as another simplifying assumption, if part of this rectangle does cross the wetlands like it does right there, just ignore it. Pretend it doesn't. It's a very short space where it would be crossing. And then go ahead and make your measurements. One centimeter is 100 feet. So if I go from 10 centimeters here to about right there, it looks like it's about 3.7 centimeters. I rounded that down in the email to about 30 centimeters, actually, I could have done 35. I didn't make a drawing. I think I rounded that down on the email for 30. Maybe it was 35, I don't remember. Let's just go ahead and pretend it's 30 centimeters, or three, uh, three centimeters, which would be 30 feet. Is that what I did or not? Does anybody remember offhand? Can you? 350, okay, so I did 3.5 centimeters. Okay, close enough. Close enough to 3.5 centimeters on the map, and that corresponds to one, uh, 350 feet, because one centimeter is 100 feet. I think I approximated this to be 70 feet, so about 0.7 centimeters, is that right, or is that what something different there? No, 1.7. That's about 1.7 centimeters, so that would correspond to 170 feet. 1.7 centimeters on the map, would correspond to 170 feet. And then here it was like a thousand or something. It was like 10 centimeters. Yeah, pretty close. Going from here up to there is pretty close to 10 centimeters. Let's just go ahead and make that simplifying assumption that it is 10 centimeters. So that would be a thousand feet. Not the entire height of the rectangle, but the distance between this point right there and A right there. And I had you compute the cost going around this path straight down from B to here, then over to here, then back up straight to A, trying to avoid the wetland area. And the cost you have to take into account are the cost of the pipe itself, $1.50 per foot, and normal terrain installation costs, $1.20 per foot. Add those together, you get $2.70 per foot, multiply times the number of feet. Total number of feet being? 170 over there plus 350 plus 1000. 1520 feet times two dollars and seventy cents is four thousand one hundred and four dollars. 270 again comes from adding those. We don't need that track hoe because we're not talking about the wetland area, but we do need the cost of the pipe itself and the installation costs, which again, evidently include labor costs. So where would we go from here? That's what you thought about before class. Where would we go from here? We found sort of a baseline cost, you might say, of about $4,100 by going around through the bottom. But we can cross the wetland. We've gotten approval for that. Maybe a path, if we pretend the wetland is this rectangle, a better path would be to say, do something like this. Or maybe even go straight all the way just through the wetland. That's, that's certainly the shortest path is going straight through the wetland. But it does cost more to go through the wetland per foot and per hour, you might say. But since it's shortest, maybe it's best. It's unclear. Again, this distance was 170 feet from B down to here. Pretend B is right on the rectangle, even though I've drawn it slightly off. And this distance right there is 1,000 feet. And this distance right here is 350 feet. 
let's just pretend that the best route is something like this, partially through the wetland and partially on dry ground. <clears throat> I want to minimize cost. What other, well, what's the variable in the scheme when I, when I go across like this and go down here? What's, I, there are different paths I could take. I could go like this as well, or I could go more like this as well. What's an example of a simple variable that's unknown there that if I could solve for it, I might be able to find the minimum cost? By variable, I'm thinking about a distance here in this picture. You want to say? Well, it's related to that. And we do want to find not the shortest path, but the shortest, the least cost. Because again, here's the shortest path, but because it's all through the wetland and the wetland costs so much to lay down with the track hoe that that might not be the minimum cost. Perhaps it's best to go straight across the wetland to make the wetland part as short as possible before going through the, uh, the along the dry land right there. I guess what I'm thinking of as a possible variable is just this distance right there, call it X. If I could figure out what value of X makes the total cost as small as possible, I guess that means I've solved the problem. How are we gonna solve for X though? We need to figure out how the total cost depends on X. The total cost is a function of X. That's where functions and calculus comes into play. We want to write the cost as a function of x. Our goal or intermediate goal is to write the total cost, which we're trying to minimize, evidently in dollars, not dollars per foot or dollars per hour, but in dollars, right? Right. That's what really affects the bottom line is the total cost in dollars. Okay, all right, thanks. <clears throat> Let's call this total cost C. We wanna write this total cost as a function of X. And X is in feet. C equals F of X. That's the intermediate goal. That's the mathematical model, you might say. And if we can write it as a function of X, we could do various things with that function. We could graph it. See where the minimum is, if there is a minimum, a low point on the graph. Maybe use calculus to find that minimum point. If I could figure out these distances, I could do an appropriate multiplication based on this information to figure out that total cost, couldn't I? Well, that distance is easy. Right here to here, it's just X. What's this distance right there? That's a big question mark. Any ideas for how to figure out how that distance depends on X and it does depend on X. If I pick different X's, I get different distances there. Any idea what I should use, yeah? You could, uh, if you're thinking about particular examples, but we wanna be fancier than that because it'll be beneficial. We wanna think of it as a function of X and yeah, trying a lot of different examples while that's, Fine, it doesn't give you a function that you might want to minimize. It could give you an approximate idea of the answer. I don't know, I see a right triangle in there. So do you think I should use trigonometry or the Pythagorean theorem? Or maybe both? Go ahead. 
Yeah, Pythagorean theorem is going to be quicker if we don't have to worry about angles. I think with the trapezoid model, we will have to worry about angles. How does this length right here depend on x? Well, if this distance is 1,000 and this is 170, I guess this total distance here is 1,000 minus 170. That would be 830 feet. And if this distance is called x, what would this distance be? Pretend x is a fixed quantity. 830 minus x. And this side length is 350. That's a constant. So this question mark distance, question mark, thinking of question mark as a variable, is a distance by the Pythagorean theorem would be the square root of 350 squared plus 830 minus x squared. That's what that distance is. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there today. I think at least for part of participation credit for class 29, I'll send you an email this afternoon asking you to use the fact that I've solved for question mark here as a distance. That's the distance formula, essentially. The Pythagorean theorem is what I used. If you're unclear as to why, you need to think about it. And the fact, use the fact that this distance is x and use the information on this page, including now the dollars per hour for the track hoe to figure out c of x, c is a function of x. Careful though, you will have to use the fact that this is given in dollars per hour, whereas this is a distance in feet. You're gonna have to convert to dollars somehow. The cost should be in dollars. I'll give you another hint that you'll need to use the fact that it can dig 300 feet of trench in 10 hours, or in other words, 30 feet in one hour is something else you're gonna to have to use to help you finish solving the problem. Okay, so again, before Wednesday, I'll have you send me the formula for the function I wanna minimize. Then in class on Wednesday, at least one of the things that we do. In class on Wednesday, we will then go ahead and graph that function and see if we can use calculus to minimize it. And that will kind of finish, well, the first model, at least the rectangular model. Then probably on Friday, we'll have to think about the trapezoidal model and see if it, we can do better. But that's part of the modeling process. <laughs>